It's time for my virtual Jericho with John Mayer. Hello, welcome. Jericho is full of nooks and crannies and arts and crafts around every corner. One of the more intriguing is the Canal Street Pottery opposite the bookbinders. I've always wondered what went on inside. It was closed for all the COVID lockdown. Then I spotted Hannah Eden selling the street fair in August. She said she did very well and booked her for a My Jericho session. Earlier today, I went to see her in action at her wheel. It was intriguing until the tech let us down. Let's see how she makes a pop. Hello, we're in your little studio here in Canal Street. Mm -hmm. um, what are you going to make for us today? So I'm going to make um, a couple of bowls for you on the wheel. So I'm using terracotta clay. So first of all, I'm going to aim to get this in the center. So I just bang down and then I've got a pedal here which controls the speed. It's a bit like a sewing machine pedal. Okay, so to center it, you have its full speed. I'm going to be dipping my hands in the water because it gets quite dry. And first of all, I'm going to be pressing down. So I'm using my whole body to, to control the clay. I'm using my legs, my tummy muscles, my shoulders, my arms. And then I'm gonna pull it up into a cone shape. And this helps the clay become more malleable. And it also helps with the centering. So you pull it up and then I'm gonna push it down, push it forwards and then down. And then I'm going to do that one more time. So up, so I'm really using my legs, my tummy muscles, my shoulders. Down. How did you learn to do pottery? Um, I did a degree um, at Campbell School of Art and I graduated in 94, so I learned the wheel um, then from quite a famous popper actually, Colin Pearson, who was teaching at the college at the time. Um, he was about 80 years old, um, probably England's one of England's most famous potters. Um, so yes, that's where I first. So, why did you want to do pottery? Um, I just fell in love with the material um, and I loved working in, in a 3D kind of sculptural way and I just loved the glazes, the chemistry of it, uh, the sculptural aspect of it. Um, so yeah, it was just perfect for my ideas. So what I'm doing now is that Clay is still a bit off centre, so I'm just going to get it perfectly in the centre because if it's not in the centre, you'll get a wonky bowl. So I'm being very thick. And if I'm fixed, the clay will go in the centre. So you've been doing it for nearly 30 years now? Yes. Gosh. Yes. So I've been teaching, um, teaching since I graduated, um, various places, schools, hospitals, um, colleges. It's quite therapeutic, isn't it? Oh yes, yeah, yeah definitely. Tell us how people in, with mental problems or in hospitals react to it. Um, I think it helped them, obviously they had a lot going on in their head with their illness, so it was a way of kind of getting out of their head and just making, so it gave them a bit of a break just to be able to make, create, get out of their kind of head space and uh, produce something at the end of the session. So it also gave them a lot of confidence. Um, 
because uh, they produced something. And a lot of them went on to do pottery uh, once they left the hospital, kind of in the community. But things can go wrong, can't they? You don't always make a perfect pot. No. No, you don't. I mean, even though I've been doing it for nearly 30 years, um, I can still sometimes get a wonky pot. Um, I'm just going to let my cat in. Just for a sec. Okay. She comes in and out constantly. Come on, boo. Come on. Come, come in. Come on. Come on. No. Oh, yeah, she did come in. So we're talking about wonky pots. What do you do when you get a wonky pot? Uh, I just squish it up and then recycle it. Yeah. So, so you'll see here, these are all pots that have gone wonky. Um, and I've just put them on the board to be recycled. So you throw them away? No, it all gets, yeah. Well, it all gets recycled the place. And that, there's no waste in the pottery. So that's my cat. Yes, okay, so I've centered the clay. I'm going to reduce the speed now. It's kind of medium. And I'm just going to put my thumb in the center. And I'm going to... I'm just going to turn it off and just check you don't want to go all the way through because that's going to be the bottom of your pot. So yeah, that's a good thickness. And then turn it on again. And I'm going to keep my thumb on the bottom and I'm just going to begin to open out. And that's going to be the width of my the bottom of my bowl. This is all very simple. It's been like this for thousands of years in the pottery. Um, if you have been on a wheel. Okay, it's not simple. It's very challenging. Um, yeah, I guess people watch people throwing bowls and then they come here and expect to make these perfect bowls, but it takes years to actually create a bowl. And, you know, to be able to become um, a master on the wheel. Okay, so I've just opened it out. I'm now going to reduce the speed and I'm going to begin to bring it up. So I make a groove. The art is in the way you use your fingers and your waist. Yeah, exactly. That would be really centered with your body. Um, so it's quite physical. Yeah, but you do have the strength in your body to be able to. So I've had children that have been able to center clay, and I've also had huge men that haven't been able to center. So it's not about, it is about strength, but it's about holding your body in the right position um, to, be, to be able to um, anchor yourself. Because if you're not anchored, you're just going to want to keep old. So I'm beginning to put it up now. Now, do you, do you come on the wheel with an idea of what the pot's going to, going to be at the end of it? Do you have an idea in your brain? Yeah. Yeah, I do. So what's this going to be? What, 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 what sort of a pot? This is going to be a bowl. So I make a cylinder, first of all. And I'm just making sure the clay's really nice and even and it's not too thick at the bottom, so I'm just bringing this up. Okay, so that's a cylinder. So that can obviously be turned into a cup, jug, small bars. Um, and then to turn it into a bowl, I'm just going to pull out the lid. And then I'm going to begin to make the bowl shape. So pulling it out. When you do your private lessons, how long does it take you to turn somebody to a potter? Oh, what, to be able to make a bowl? Yes, like this or near, near like this. Um, oh, gosh. Everyone is different. Um, but I would say, oh, gosh, maybe about 
five two hour classes, possibly. But it depends on the on the person really. I mean I've had some people can throw quite a decent bowl straight away. Uh, some people really struggle with it. Are there some people you tell say if you're wasting your money, you'll never be able to do this properly? No. <laughs> no, everyone can do it. It's just it's just um it's just practice, it's practice. So you've never turned uh, students away or sent them home? No, never. <laughs> no. Everybody has it within them to make it to yes. throw a good pot. And everyone struggles with the um, with the clay on the wheel at the beginning. Everyone. Actually, there was one exception. I had one person who'd never been on the wheel in his life. And he came and he made a perfect bowl. Um, it was almost kind of shop quality. And I was just amazed because I've never ever seen it in the 27 years I've been teaching. And I asked him, I said, well, what do you do for a living? And he said, I'm a pilot. So I think he had that kind of natural kind of centeredness in himself, especially with working with the machine, uh, kind of almost at one. Um, and then also he was very good at following the instructions. Uh, but yes, that's the only person I've known to throw a perfect ball. What's he doing now? Uh, I think he's still flying planes, yes. <laughs> flying. What was that tool you just used there, put, put into the centre of the bowl? Oh, so this is called a kidney. Right. So I'm using this shape to get a nice round shape on my bowl. I'm just holding it against it and then I'm going to use this tool just to find it at the bottom and then tomorrow what I'll do is when this is leather hard I'll turn it upside down and I'll trim it but I'll show you how I trim a bowl next. How do you know when that bowl is finished? You. Well for me it's the shape is how I want it. Um, yeah, I'm quite satisfied with that. So your eyes tell you that that's yeah. finished? Yes, exactly. I have to clean the wheel. And then put a bit of water on the back and then just. Here. Okay, and then I'll show you how to trim a bowl next. Please. Trim my hands. Okay, so these are bowls that were made a little bit earlier at the weekend. So yeah. they say in the future. Yeah. And they've, they've dried out a little bit. Today. Yeah, so they're still nice and leather hard. Um, I'll just clean the wheel. Oh, yeah. How long have you had the wheel for? Um, about 10 years. Well, I've had, a, I had an old, older wheel, but this is quite a new wheel. It's probably um, about three years old, this particular wheel. So I'm just getting out some tools for me. Then, so you've got a perfectly clean wheel, these are the bowls at, at two days old. Yes, so I'm going to place it on the, in the centre, it's going to be that by eye. Stick it in the centre.
So if you become really skilled, you can actually, one, when the wheel's turning, you can bang it into the center, but I've never been able to perfect that in 27 years. I've been throwing, so I just do it by eye. It's, it's still a bit off center. It's it looks yeah. And then I just get three bits of clay. And the clay is just pure clay, which you buy as powder and you make up. No, I buy it in bags when it's soft. So this is terracotta clay. Um, and I get it from uh, a place in Tileherd called Blue Matchbox. So I like to kind of try and get local suppliers. Uh, and where does that clay come from initially? I'm quite sure we're in the world. I mean, no, I don't think it does come from, it might come from England, but obviously a very iron rich place, uh, soil, clay, soil. <laughs> okay, so I've just fixed it. I'm now going to just tidy it up. This is quite satisfying, this bit. It's a bit like a cheese slicing. Yeah. You're just taking off the excess and, and shaking it. Yeah, that's right. You want to get rid of all that thick, thick clay on the bottom. You do this all by eye, essentially. Yeah, and feel. I'm now going to cut a foot into it. So let's grab this tool. So make sure that I'm anchored, very fixed. And then I'm going to cut some stuff. When you say a foot, you mean what it stands on? Yes, that's right. All your life is here. You've got scaffolders across the road, cats coming in. Yep. Now, you've only just opened up again after lockdown, haven't you? You were closed for a year and a half. Year and a half. Yes. What was that like as a, a creative potter? do nothing um well it gave an opportunity for me to give this pottery a deep clean and also help me um to do a bit of my own work which i hadn't really had much time to do which was good that those are pots for yourself um well i I'm, I'm actually a hand builder so I, I do sculptural pieces. So, Out of clay or? Uh, yeah, so these are the pieces up here. Yeah. Hmm. How, long, how long does something like that take you? Uh, what, those pieces? Hmm. Um, that one was very quick. These were quite, quite a long time to make, the ones at the top. So I recently did a, an MA in ceramics. I just felt like my work needed a bit of a, um, I just needed to do something different. Um, so I did an MA at Bar to Bar, mm -hmm. which took um, a year and a half. During to, lockdown? Uh, no, I, I graduated in, uh, 2019. Just before. Yes. Now, not far from here in Walton Street, there's a ceramic shop there that sells um, 
ceramics for two thousand pounds. Yeah. How are they made, and why are they worth so much money? Uh, well, they probably have some of the most famous potters in the world uh, exhibiting them. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it's probably one of the best ceramic galleries, I would say, um, in in England, um, even in Europe. Um, we're very, I feel very lucky having it on our doorstep. Um, so yeah, a lot of my ex tutors show there. Um, some amazing Japanese ceramicists. Um, yeah, it's it's an amaz amazing amazing um, shop uh, gallery. Do, do you go there? Yes, I go on a regular basis to be inspired. Um, and just to look at the work. It's just so nice having it just around the corner. Do they know you're a potter? Yes, yes, I know. I know them. Uh, yes. And have you ever paid two thousand pounds for a piece of pottery? No, no, no. I wish I had that kind of money. No. Um, but I do. I'm a big collector of Dylan Bowen's work, so I go to his exhibition, his studio in Tapley, and I I buy pieces from him. What sort of thing does he do? Uh, he does mainly throwing stuff, but he's recently been doing kind of sculptural pieces, figurines, figures. Um, so he makes very big kind of charges, um, beautiful plates. Uh, his style is very kind of um, free, very abstract. So sculptors like artists, you can actually tell who, who's who, who's um, potter's like us, who's, who's, who's it is. You can look at it and say, oh, that's the bill, whatever. That's... Oh, yes. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. Everybody has their style. Yes, yes. As you can see, the, um, the tech let us down a little bit there. One of the three phone cameras simply stopped working. It's a pity because Hannah went on to throw another pot and talk about the drying process and then into the kiln to bake it. The kiln is in her garden, by the way. Then she glazes using paints and other materials. That process gives it the style which is unique to each potter. The superstars, as she said, sell their pots. Creation is a better word in that lovely ceramics gallery in Walton Street. Some of those cost up to £2,000. Hannah has to be content with £200 put for her ceramic pillows for your wall, full of her dreams. Come along on the 17th to see if she has any of those to sell there. Put a tip. She puts uncollected work from the students out on the pavement after three months for you to pick up and take home, and it's free. Her studio, complete with a cat coming in and out, is an idyll, a dream, in, in the busy Canal Street. Go peer in the window. You may even see a piece that takes your fancy. Now remember, Sunday, October 17th, Hannah will be there at Mount Place Oktoberfest from 12 o'clock to 4.30. There's going to be four or five bands on a canal boat, Six or seven stalls, a special Ox, 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 Oktoberfest brew from Little Ox Brewery. Tom, the German sausage man from from uh, from the covered from the market, and there's German food on on sale. So tschüss, see you there. And next week, a, a, a my Jericho doubleheader on on Wednesday the thirteenth, when when Morse and Lewis came to Jericho, thirty five years ago in January, the dead of Jericho first aired. And we relive Canal Reach and also the blown Canal Reach, which starred in that, the very first uh, Inspector Morse. So uh, Co Coombe Road is Canal Reach. The whole whole of that first Inspector Morse was about Jericho and, and around here. And we also relive the, the blowing up in 2008 of 31 Nelson Street for Lewis. We have the director, Richard Spence, and, and he talks about how it was done, the techniques of it. And, and we have some film of locals uh, all, all, all watching what happened. And on Thursday, there's a live My Jericho. Yes, we do have a live My Jericho after months and months of, of, of lockdown. That's on Thursday the 14th at 6 o'clock in, in St. Barnabas Church. Uh, she'll be, she'll, she's Cara Hunter. She sells is Inspector Foley police novels by the truckloads. She's, she's the Sunday Times bestseller. She will talk about them and she'll sign some books. 
but please, cash only. We don't, we don't have a card machine. So come, come and see Cara on, on the 14th at 6 o'clock in St. Barnabas Church. And a £5 entry, but that goes straight to the church clock. Uh, the, that's broken, and it's stuck at 9.35. So help to restore that church clock. Jericho, though, keeps moving on. So does my Jericho. Tune in or turn up. See you next week, or catch up. Catch us on, on catch up. All past my virtual jokers are there. See you then. Bye.